The purpose of these videos is to orient you to what components look like and how you act on them. If you haven't yet viewed the Watch Me First video, please do that first, as it lets you know what to expect. As you read in Chapter 5, codes are named concepts that can be linked to other components for either analytic or housekeeping purposes. In this video, we show you what codes look like and where they are stored. We show how to create codes, both manually and by autocoding, how to move codes around the code system, and how to visualise and interrogate codes in different ways. Codes are stored in the code system and can be accessed and managed from there. At the top of the code system are several icons that provide access to different functions relating to codes, and we'll look at a few of those shortly. I'll also show you how to create codes, but for now, just notice that they can be organised into hierarchical groups, have colour applied to them, which can indicate whatever you like, and on the right hand side of the code system, the total number of coded segments so far linked to each code across all documents are listed. At the bottom of the code system are code sets, which contain shortcuts to codes. We discuss these in the video about that component. If you've used emoti codes, then these are also stored within the code system, wherever you chose to store them. In this project there are a few underneath the emotions code. But emoticodes can also be viewed separately by clicking on this icon. As well as working with codes in the default hierarchical view that we're looking at now, we can also choose to visualise them in a table view. This list can be sorted by any column header. If you want to find a code, then we can just use this icon here to search for a word. And MaxQDA will highlight that code in the code system, and that works whichever view we're in. It's worth knowing that you have complete freedom to create new codes whenever you need to, so you can create and organise codes in the coding in the code system upfront if your approach to coding is deductive. For example, I can just right click, create a new code, give it a name, apply colour, and if I feel the need to, I can define it in a code memo, and it will sit in my code system waiting to be used, and I can create subcodes in a similar way at any point. If I want to apply those codes, to segments, the, the easiest way is probably by dragging and dropping. And I can apply multiple codes to the same or overlapping segments. If I want to create codes in a more inductive way, as I'm reading through my data, then I can select text that I want to code and I can generate a new code from that position also. And that will create the code in the code system and apply it to the segment in the same action. So coding can be accomplished in several ways. As well as creating codes manually in the ways I've just shown, you can also create codes as a result of auto-coding or running a query. I'll show you a coding query in a moment, but first let's look at generating codes by auto-coding. Auto-coding can happen on the basis of various different criteria and can be focused on one or several documents or codes. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll generate a code by running a lexical query. And I'll do that across all documents. So I'm just going up to the analysis menu and choosing the lexical search. And here's the term I'm searching for. And the result is given to me in a table. And I've got two options here that I can choose depending on whether I want to code the results to a new code or an existing code. I'm just going to take a new code uh, for now. And then I need to decide how much context around each hit I want to code. I'll just take the sentence and click the autocode option. And I've now quickly coded 184 sentences across my documents. There are various other options that we have to be more picky about what we're coding in this way, 
but I'm not going to show that to you right now. It's also possible to move codes around the coding system whenever you need to. And I can just do that by dragging and dropping. No problem at all. And if I want to change the colour of a whole group of codes, then I just right click on the codes and choose a different colour. It will then ask me if I want to change the colour for the subcodes, and I can choose the option accordingly. In fact, right clicking on codes gives you various actions that can be taken on those codes. Some of these will look in some of the other videos, for example, transforming into a document variable, generating overviews of coded segments, etc. There are various ways of visualising codes. In, doc in documents, we can visualise the codes by scrolling up and down the document. This document hasn't got that much coding on it so far, so let's just open up a document that's got more coding on it, and we can see the overlapping codes in the margin, and I can filter that margin to see only some, co only some of the colours if I want to. There are other ways of visualising codes. For example, we can visualise them in maps, but we'll look at those options in the video about maps. In addition, there are other ways of visualising codes available from the codes main menu. For example, we can get an overview of codes, and that will give us information about all our codes. And we can get information about subcodes in a graph. Let's just finish up by thinking briefly about interrogating codes. For example, we might be interested when visualising codes by looking at a document and the margin view to see that certain codes are co-occurring. If I want to pick out those co-occurring codes in other documents, then that might be one reason for doing a coding query. So I'm just going to activate two codes, education and significantly positive, for example, and I'm going to do a quick coding query. Here you can see the two codes I've chosen. I'm going to go for the intersection option. And once I've got my retrieve segments window open, what I've got in, the, in that window are segments that have been coded by both those codes. I can't see that in the margin here because I've got my margin view not revealing all my codes, but if I just change that, you should see here that all of the segments that are retrieved have got the two codes I asked for, and maybe others applied to them. There are many other actions that can be taken on codes, and many of them are accessible, as I said earlier, by right-clicking on a code. In this video, we've just given you a flavour of some of these actions to get you orientated to codes and how they may be used.